In part 3 of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, we were first introduced to the concept of stands. We didn't know much about them, only that they had been around for some time in human history. It wasn't until part 4 that we learned about the stand era, which can give someone a stand. Part 5 is when we finally got the lore dump on stands, including how the arrows got into the hands of many of the series' characters. In this video, I'm going to go over the origin of the arrows, and then discuss the whereabouts of each arrow by the end of the continuity. The history of stands begins circa 50,000 BC, when a meteorite crash-landed in Cape York, Greenland. The meteorite held a strange virus that would kill most life that came in contact with it. However, if you are compatible with the virus, you will be bestowed with a supernatural ability known as a stand. At some point later, an unknown man discovered the meteorite and fashioned six arrows from it. There are two types of arrows that we see in the Jojo manga. Five with the standard design with a hole in the middle and one with a beetle carving. The arrows were eventually lost to time, but resurfaced in 1986. During the excavation of Egyptian ruins, a young Diavolo noticed the potential of these arrows and stole them from the dig site. Diavolo sold five of these arrows, including the beetle arrow to Enya, and kept one to recruit new members for his crime syndicate, Passion. The arrows kept by Enya were either distributed among Dio's minions or kept for Dio's personal use. After Dio's death in 1988, Jotaro Kujo and Jean-Pierre Polnareff set out to locate the remaining stand arrows. Now, let's look at what happened to each arrow throughout the series. Of the five arrows Enya purchased, one was used to awaken Dio's stand, The World, spreading a curse among the living descendants of Jonathan Joestar. I find it likely that this is the arrow we see on the wall of Dio's mansion in the anime adaptation. It was likely recovered by the Speedwagon Foundation after Dio's death. The second arrow was given to the Nijimura brothers' father. In 1999, this arrow was used by Kaicho Nijimura in an attempt to find a stand user capable of killing his father. Kaicho was killed by Akira Atoishi, who took the arrow for himself. After Akira's defeat, the arrow was put into custody of the Speedwagon Foundation. The third arrow is unaccounted for. Considering the fact that it never came up again, it was likely also recovered by the Speedwagon Foundation. One of these three arrows later became the source of the shard which Jotaro gave to his daughter in 2011 to awaken her stand, Stone Free. The fourth arrow was given to Yoshihiro Kira. He would use it in 1999 to recruit stand users to fight Josuke Higashikata and his allies. He used this arrow to awaken a stand in himself and in his son, Yoshikage Kira. This was also the arrow which gave Yoshikage his Bites the Dust ability. This arrow was destroyed when Yoshihiro was killed. The fifth arrow was the one kept by Diavolo. This was the arrow used to awaken the stands of Diavolo and the other Passion members. It was given to Pulpo and kept within his stand Black Sabbath as a recruitment tool. In 2001, Pulpo was killed, which destroyed the arrow. The sixth and final arrow was the one with the unique beetle carving. This is known to some fans as the Requiem Arrow, since it is the only arrow ever shown to awaken Requiem stands. This arrow was first used in the 1980s by Dio to awaken the stands of Enrico Pucci and Weather Report. It was eventually recovered by Polnareff in Egypt, who then went into hiding after a nearly fatal encounter with Diavolo. While in hiding, Polnareff first discovered the immense power of this arrow in a freak accident in which he pricked his stand's finger. This arrow was the primary target of Diavolo in the later half of Part 5 who wishes to use it to awaken his own Requiem stand. In a last-ditch effort of stopping Diavolo, Polnareff used the arrow on his own stand, creating Silver Chariot Requiem. The arrow was finally secured by Giorno, who used it to awaken Gold Experience Requiem and defeat Diavolo. Instead of destroying the arrow, Giorno decided to keep it as a reminder of his journey. As of Part 6, every stand arrow is either under the control of the Speedwagon Foundation or has been destroyed. Their involvement in the series essentially ended after Part 5, but I think it was worth it to see the extent to which Diavolo's actions affected the rest of the world. And with that, we have reached the end of the history of the Stand Arrows. I hope you enjoyed this video, and that it has given you a better understanding of the extensive backstory behind these artifacts.